yes, yes, I did say that I was on a book buying ban. However, it's not my fault that Waterstones then decided to do a double point sale across the bank. Hello my loves and thank you for joining me. It's Kirsten and we're at the start of another weekly read and vlog. I have one book that I'm carrying over from last week which is a YA thriller How We Fall Apart by Katie Zell. I am halfway through this book. I'm hoping to finish it up honestly in the next two days. I would like to spend the next two mornings finishing this book up. That is the plan. We're following one main character, Nancy, but she has three friends which are Akil, Crystal and Alexander. And they were really good friends and they were really good friends with this one particular girl called Jamie who was at the top of the class in the school. Everyone wanted to be her. She was very popular, very ruthless. Like she was a very, uh, yeah, ruthless is the right word. She would stop at nothing to get to the top, even if it meant hurting other people. But we had this group of friends that were all together until Jamie turns up dead. And these four people are being accused of her murder. And we're seeing this all from Nancy's perspective. We have someone that is being anonymous. They're going around on the school gossip app, airing the secrets of these four main characters, the different things that they've done to climb to the top because they've all got pressure from their family to be the best to do the best and it's a really interesting look at seeing that side of things and seeing the pressure that they have to deal with and the fact that it does lead them down some really questionable decisions so that's what we're in the middle of i would say if you've read one of us is lying by karen Manus, it is very similar to that and i'm enjoying it it's a fast easy fun read i don't know how i feel about it in terms of rereading it like i am enjoying it i want to know what happens i want to finish it but when i reread it i'm not sure i think it's going to depend on the ending if it's too similar to one of us is lying i probably wouldn't reread it because it's predictable but we'll see how it goes for now it's just a really fun light read which is exactly what i need because because I'm on book four of the Magnolia Park series and this one is Daisy Hay, The Great Undoing. So basically what happened yesterday is I finished Magnolia Park's A Long Way Home and it ended on such a cliffhanger. I was like, wait, what? No, we can't end like this. And so I went straight into Daisy Hay's The Great Undoing and I'm now up to chapter 15, page 71. Because of the way this works, uh, we're not continuing on from the end of Magnolia Parks. No, 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 no. We're going back to the start. <laughs> the way it works is the odd numbers in this series follow Magnolia Park, all the drama surrounding her and BJ and their love and the mess basically that comes of it, the messy rich people drama. And then Daisy Hates books, so two and four, follow Daisy Hates, her brother and Christian, and they kind of take place at the same time as the Magnolia Parks books, but you don't get all the details of the Magnolia Parks books. Some things you just get told about in passing because it kind of goes on the assumption that you've already read the Magnolia Parks books, so I would still read them in order of one, two, three, four. If you don't want to read the Daisy Hates books, technically you don't have to, it's just it gives you more information of what's going on on that side of things, and I really like them, so that's what I'm doing. So it's, it's one of those things that when I read the Magnolia Parks books I just want to carry on with those and then when I read the Daisy Hates books I just want to carry on with those however the third book left on such a cliffhanger and the fifth book's not out till next year that I was like I'm not happy with this I want to know what's going on straight away and I just hoped beyond hope that the fourth book was going to carry on from where it ended I know it wouldn't and it doesn't but I was really hoping it did. <laughs> but in this book, we do have our three perspectives. As I said, we've got Daisy Hates, her brother Julian, who is a gang lord, and Christian, who is kind of like a baby gang lord. It's a good fun time. I enjoy it. Daisy Hates is very smart. She's training to be a medical doctor. And I like seeing her perspective of things going from Magnolia Parks, who is very vain and vapid and selfish, to then having Daisy Hates, who, don't get me wrong, is still got a whole host of issues. Like, everyone's got issues here. It's just interesting to see how she no longer cares about that she cares about art and medical side of things and learning and things and that's what she prioritizes but she's still got this messy romance going on and then we also get Julian's perspective which gives a added depth to a story because you have more going on in terms of the gang side of things so you've got the crime side of things these are the two books that we're starting off the week with and I'm hoping to finish both of them rather soon because I want to do my wrap-up video on Wednesday so we'll see if that actually gets done but I'm enjoying both of these reads they're light fun reads from there I don't know what I'm gonna read for the rest of the week I'm not gonna lie I've got no idea I'm quite busy so I might just pick up another short book off the TBR not that I've got many of those because if we saw the September TBR we'd know that they're all chunky but that was the options for this month is just chunky 
book. So we may just end up starting off with a chunky book and bringing that into next week because I don't think I'm going to get one of them finished this week. A couple of them are month-long buddy reads so I do need to start, no that's next week, I need to start that next week. So yeah, so maybe maybe this week we'll just use to finish up a smaller book or get started on one of the bigger books. I don't know, I haven't decided. All I do know is that we're finishing How We Fall Apart and finishing Daisy Hates The Great Undoing and that's all I know. That's it. That's where we're at. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Let me know how you've been, what you've been up to, what you're currently reading, and let's get on with the rest of this weekly reading vlog, which I have no idea what it's going to bring. I feel like it's going to be a bit more chaotic because I don't know what we're doing, but I guess we're going to find out. I have some reading updates for you, obviously. Let's start off with Daisy Hates The Great Undoing. So I am now up to, I should always check this before I do the updates, but never mind. Chapter 34, page 191. So I'm just over halfway through. Still really enjoying this. Like I've said many times when I'm talking about this series, it is not the best written and this book does take place at the same time as the third book. It can be irritating because there are repetitive scenes that happen, but I really don't mind. I like the fact that we're expanding upon different characters in this world and seeing it from different sides. I don't know, there's something about this that just works for me. Like, it's not a book I would have thought I would ever like. Like, in all honesty, every time I was seeing videos about Magnolia Parks and stuff, I was like, oh, I'm never gonna be interested in that. I eat my words because this book, it really is just working for me. There's something about it that really connects for me. And I think it's because it's so easy to read. And like I say, it's not the best written, but it's compelling enough that I want to keep reading and I want to carry on with this series. I think the reason why it works so well is because it's so completely different to everything else I read. It means that it's a complete palette cleanser for me. So it's so different. It's not something I need to focus on the plot line of it. It's just a relaxing, chill, fun time and there are moments where I do just laugh with this book because it's so ridiculous. Kind of nice to have something that is so very different to what I would normally pick up. I'm enjoying it which is really good because I finished How We Fall Apart and I was not that impressed with this. I think the ending was very kind of predictable in a way. It wasn't something that surprised me. It just felt very much like One of Us is Lying and I know I've said that every single time I talk about this book but it is. The tagline of it's One of Us is Lying meets Crazy Rich Asians is kind of perfect for what this book is because you do have the rich people drama of the students that are very rich but as a result they have, well not even as a result, regardless of their wealth actually, their parents are very pressuring and force them into this little niche which they don't want to have to do but pair that with some rich drama as well and yeah the plot line of One of Us is Life. That's kind of what it is really. It's, it was fine but I'm not going to pick up the second book and I'm not going to reread it so I think this is just going to be an unhaul for me. Like I'm pleased that I've read it because it's something that I've had on my shelves for over a year now and it's fine. Not every book has to be a new favourite like this was a fine fun read. It was a good way to end the month I think but it just yeah I, I think why a thrillers for me isn't something I gravitate towards as much and to be fair even adult thrillers it's not something that I would go oh yeah that was really good and I really want to keep that and reread that like that's very rare for me. Murder mysteries are different I prefer those but I did say in my wrap up which I filmed yesterday that if you did like One of Us as Lion then you probably will really enjoy this one unless of course you find it too similar and if that bothers you but if you are looking for something similar to that 
I would say give this one a try. But yeah, I'm pleased that I've read it. But that's it. So now we're going to be moving on to September reads. But today I am rather busy. Today I'm going out with my partner. We're actually doing a date night. It feels like forever since we've done a proper date night where we've got the meal booked and hotel and everything. Like it feels like it's been a long time since we've done that. So really looking forward to that. Going to one of my favourite restaurants. I'm so excited. But that does mean I need some reading material to bring with me. So I've got a few options. Okay, so one is on my TBR for the month and that is is Vampires. This is the technically non-fiction book which actually somebody told me in the comments that folklore does come under non-fiction so that's amazing. So yeah I'm thinking to start this one I think it's going to be a really good read but I also have a couple more books. I would really like to read the short story The Vampire by John Poldori. This is only 20 pages long so I'd like to get that read. Also potentially Dead Man Wonderland volume 2 because me and my partner are buddy reading this so we might spend an evening reading this. Technically we are actually some of the way through we got up to uh, volume 7 so we're a little bit of the way through this he reads it on his phone I read it in the physical format so we might do that so that's only if he wants to do that as well because we are buddy reading it together but I'm thinking definitely I would like to read these two I would really like to read these I think that's what I'm going to take with me for definite so we've got a nice little mix of different things that I want to read and then we'll go from there I don't know how far into any of these books I'm actually going to get read but that's the plan I would like to do that and then we'll see what the rest of the week brings I don't really know I've got these two days off and then I'm back on my early shifts because normally after an early shift I'm too tired to read anything like really in depth so we'll, we'll, we'll see. There's a lot of the books that I've got on my TBR this month are actually massive so uh, this is the shortest book on that TBR. I'm trying to plan out all my readings for next week and stuff as well and I haven't even decided fully what I'm reading this week apart from what I'm going to take with me to the hotel knowing that I'm probably not even going to read that much. Also I'm doing loads of talking but actually I needed this to be a quicker update because I've got a nail appointment and I'm meant to leave in oh 10 minutes and I still need to pack my bag and I need to pack my bag for the hotel and that because I'm going to be going out, posting some stuff and then heading straight there because nail appointment normally takes about two hours anyway. So I've really got to stop talking and get moving and get on with things. Like I, I used to be someone that was always early for things and most of the time, yes. But then lately, if it's certain things like meeting my partner or nails or things like things that I'm not nervy about, I take forever. I actually take forever. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll give myself an hour and a half in the one then. That's more than enough time. It's not because then I always have a stress out about, well, what if I want to change what I'm wearing and stuff, especially when I'm going... This is loads of tangents that we don't actually need. I apologise, but it's a whole thing now. Anyway, I'm going to go. I feel like this week's reading is is starting off okay. I've got the really good ebook, fun ebook, so I'm enjoying that. The YA thriller was a bit of a letdown. Like, I'm not going to lie, it was a bit of a downer. However, I'm hoping that at the end of the week it picks up and we can get some at least interesting reads in. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, I need to actually still stop talking and, and go. Go. Like, we should do that. TBR for the couple of days was a bit ambitious but I did read a couple of the book oh and I got my nails done so let me show you the nail went for like an autumn theme very happy with it so me and my partner did finish reading Dead Man Wonderland volume 2 and this was a really gruesome but fun time there's a particular scene in here that involves eyes so it's definitely a body horror series as it progresses it's a prison that makes the inmates compete against one another to survive so think things like Squid Games or Alice in Borderlands it's also a lot of fun to body read with my partner especially because I have quite visceral reactions to some things that goes on and he finds it absolutely hilarious so it was really fun to read this and we will be continuing on with the series so yeah looking forward to doing that it was just a really 
fun but gruesome time. It, it was really good. And then I also read The Vampire by John Paul Dory. This was a very short book, 23 pages, which I think I mentioned. And I have really enjoyed this. It was really fascinating to see the origins of the vampire. So I believe this is like the first classic tale of a vampire that's actually been printed. I could be wrong in that. It's just going off of what I've heard about it. Yeah, so this is a story that introduced vampire into English fiction. So there may be earlier works from other countries, but for England, this was the earliest and it was so interesting to see where the inspiration for things like Dracula came from. The descriptions of the vampire are really not too dissimilar to how we still describe them today, their charisma, their charm to their appearance. It was really fascinating to see that this is where that came from. Also the qualities of the undying and how that works, their penchant for beautiful young women, again all kind of started here. So it was so interesting for me to read this and see that as someone that loves it. Now, if you are looking for a quick read over Halloween, this could be a really good one, especially if you do like vampires and you wanna see where that all started within English fiction, I would recommend this. It was just a really interesting time, but I will say the first couple of pages are really slow. It picks up from then, it was really good. I really enjoyed it. It was just so well done and I just loved seeing the parts where I'm like that's how Dracula's described or that's how that's continued in media today. Like I loved that. I really wish I'd kind of annotated and marked those bits. I mean it's only 23 pages so it's an easy thing to go back and do but it really does show you where it all originated from and how that has stayed true because it hasn't deviated much and so I'm loving that. So yeah this was definitely something I wanted to read and I'm really pleased that I finally read the first book in English fiction that inspired the vampire craze. It was it was really good. I really enjoyed it. Would recommend. And then I did finish my ebook. So I finished Daisy Hates The Great Undoing and it was so good and again I mean I knew the way it was going to end because of Magnolia Parks as I've mentioned already because it's from Daisy and Julian's side of things and Christian's you do get more of what's going on and so the little bit that you see that focused on Magnolia within A Long Way Home gets expanded upon and it makes more sense as to what's going on through Daisy Hates and I really enjoyed that. It was really well done but it also ends in this explosion heartbreaking thing that I really just want the fifth book to be able to continue on with it. It was so good. I really really enjoyed it. I thought it was really well done. So yeah, I mean don't get me wrong, everything that I say that I enjoy about this book you still need to take with a pinch of salt because of the things that I've said that aren't as good about this series and I've mentioned it so many times I don't want to keep going on about it. I want to mention it because I don't want you going into this guy but Kirsten you said it was an amazing book and there's all these th issues with it like grammatically or things like that and it's like yes it's in there but I don't care about it. So yeah really really enjoyed this one. I cannot wait for that fifth book. It's going to be so good and I thought it was going to be me. Oh my god I've completed a series in one month. I mean technically I'm a couple of days over. Technically no because it's continuing on so I'm now just up to date with the series but it was so good and I really can't wait to carry on so yeah I'm very very pleased that I've been reading this that it's been such a fun time I now don't know what I'm gonna read as a kindle book next because where do I go from here I have no idea I do have a lot of big books on my tbr so I might see if I can get any of those as kindle so that I can read that on my lunch breaks at work without having to bring in a big book so we'll see if any of those are available on kindle unlimited or just see what I can find if it's like 99 pence or something then I'll probably pick them up and I'll do that. So that's what I think I'm going to look into. So I didn't get to start the non-fiction-ish book but hopefully I'm going to get a few pages read of that tonight. I also want to carry on my read of Pillars of the Earth. I think I've got like a hundred pages to get through so th there's things that I need to get read. So we'll see how much I actually get read today and tomorrow but... I also have to edit a video. I need to get a whole video edited and uploaded ready for tomorrow, which I don't like leaving this late, but it happens. So I need to get that done. And then my partner wants to go to Costco and he doesn't want to go on his own. And I was like, but I need to get this video done. So we're going to see. So I may end up being dragged to Costco as well, or I may be able to carry on with the rest of the plans that I've got, which is other journaling and just like catching up bits, like having a day to catch up on everything that I'm behind in. Because I do find that happens every so often. It's like a few weeks will pass and I'm so behind and I need to take a day so I can just catch up with everything. Don't know if anyone else feels like that. I feel like it's so easy to get behind because, you know, 
life gets busy. So we're either going to be able to get the to-do list done or we're going to get the main thing off the to-do list done and then get dragged to Costco. And I guess we're going to see because if I have to go to Costco you're going to be coming with me. I suppose I should stop procrastinating getting that done then. Don't get me wrong, I like going to Costco but it's a journey and a half and I don't know if I feel like it but we'll see. At least I'll get some try out of it if I go because I'll make him buy me a try. So you know, swings and roundabouts I guess. Anyway right, I should get on and do all of that stuff and I will catch up with you soon. Whether I read much more this week I don't know because I am so busy. We'll just go from there but I think regardless this is pretty good for this week so let's let's go let's let's continue on with this and we'll wrap it up next time maybe oh i'm also expecting some book mail so we'll have to have that in here but yeah anyway stop talking kirsten let's go It is now Sunday afternoon, almost the evening time. I've been at work and I have started a couple of new books but I've decided that I'm just gonna talk about those in next week's vlog because I'm gonna be starting that as soon as I finish this wrap up for this week's vlog. So we're not gonna get into that now. We do have the book mail, which I spoke about that was coming. And yes, yes, I did say in the book shopping video, if you've seen it, that I was on a book buying ban, that I wasn't gonna get any books until like the 11th or 12th of November because you've got Yauk going, which is the Young Adult Literature Convention in London. However, it's not my fault that Waterstones then decided to do a double point sale across the bank holiday weekend. That's not my fault. And it's also not my fault that I had a couple of books that I wanted to pre-order and decided, well, I might as well pre-order them and get the double points. And then I thought, while I'm at it, there's a couple of books that I've been wanting to get anyway, so I may as well just do that. And yeah, this is some of the books. The rest of them, I believe, are all pre-orders, so they'll just be trickling in every so often. So yeah, look, it wasn't really my fault, okay? Yeah, we'll blame Waterstones for having their double point sale. That that's that's whose fault this really is. Definitely. Anyway, let's open this book mail. Oh, and we did go to Costco, as you saw, although I only showed you the book part of it. So it was a rather busy day yesterday. But I did get the editing done, so that's always a bonus. I can't there's no zippy pull thing. We managed it. Okay. Ah, okay. So we have three books in here. One of them is a rather chunky book. It is The Will of the Many, and this is by James Islington. This is a book that is a contender for my Discord buddy read pick for October. So on my Discord, you, anyone can join. I'll have it all linked below for you. We do a monthly book club, and one of the options for this month was The Will of Many, and it seemed to be loads of people were really excited about this one more so than any other book. We are doing a vote between three options actually. They were kind of last minute options after I'd ordered this. But this book sounds interesting enough that even if it isn't the monthly book club pick I'm not mad about having this because this sounds really good. I'll find out what that discord thing is at the end of next week vlog for what we're reading in October. This does sound really really good and ooh they're nice end pages. I wonder if there's anything under the dust jacket. I don't think there will be. No but that is really unusual colouring. That's kind of cool. I just like the fact that we've got a map as end pages, like that's really nice. When it was put in as an option, I had heard of it because of Reagan from Peru's Project, but then I looked into it a bit more once it was an option on the Discord, and this sounds really good. So the Catanum Republic, the hierarchy, may rule the world now, but they don't know everything. I tell them my name is Viz Tillamus. I tell them I was orphaned after a tragic accident three years ago, and that good fortune alone has led to my acceptance into their most prestigious school. I tell them that once I graduate, I will gladly join the rest of the civilised society in allowing my strength, my drive and my focus that they call will to be leached away and added to the power of those above me as millions already do, as all must eventually do. I tell them that I belong and they believe me. But the truth is, I have been sent to the academy to find answers, to solve a murder, to search for an ancient weapon, to uncover secrets that may tear the Republic apart and that I will never, ever cede my will to the empire that executed my family. To survive, though, I will still have to rise through the academy ranks. I will have to smile and make friends and pretend to be one of them and win, because if I cannot, then those who want to control me, who know my real name, will no longer have any use for me. And if the hierarchy finds out who I truly am, 
then they will kill me. Sounds really interesting. It does sound really good. I was really intrigued. And I think, to be honest, even if it's not the pick for October, it may still be an option for November because a lot of people were really interested in this one. So... Yeah, really pleased to be adding this one. Then I have two more. One of the books I got is Agatha Christie, A Murder is Announced. This is by Miss Marple. Well, not by Miss Marple. Part of the Miss Marple series is the fourth book in the Miss Marple series, which I am slowly reading and decided to get it as I will be reading this one eventually. I really do like these covers though. And this is, of course, a murder mystery. I've been really feeling like picking up an Agatha Christie book actually really feeling like reading that but my tbr for september is huge so whether i get a chance to i guess we'll see but i really am feeling it happy with that and then the other book i got is also continuing a series and that is within the sanctuary of wings this is another book in the lady trent series by marie brennan i love this series the first book is a natural history of dragons and it very much is jane austen but with dragons less on the romance side of things it's more the jane austen sensibilities the social hierarchies etc but add in kind of like a light academia to it with science and our main character Lady Trent who's writing these memoirs who is looking back on her life and going through the different adventures that she had and the different dragons that she was discovering and the different things that she gets tangled up during all of these. I really enjoy these books, I think they're brilliant and so yes had to get I think this is the last one in this series and then there is another book that then follows somebody else that is related to Lady Trent. Really excited to continue on with this series. I need to read the fourth book and decided to pick up the fifth book because I know it's going to be a book that I want to read eventually. So yeah, very happy and I do love these covers. They're so good and they have illustrations throughout that are done because Lady Trent is an artist and so you get the drawings that she does and it's just so cool. It really adds to it. So yeah, so those are the three books that I picked up that have been sent out. Like I said, there was more, but they're pre-orders, so they're going to come in eventually. Really pleased with these three, but let's recap what we've read this week. So we finished Daisy Hates The Great Undoing, finishing off the Magnolia Park series as is released so far. There will be a fifth book that is coming out in February, and I really enjoy this contemporary romance, rich people drama and messiness. It is really good, really addictive. Yes, the writing style does actually need a bit of work and a bit of tweaking here and there, but the actual storyline, the characters stuff is enough that I'm hooked. I love it a lot, actually. And then I also read Dead Man's Wonderland Volume 2 with my partner, and this is just a gory manga in a prison with some deadly games that I'm enjoying. And Vampire by John Poldori, which is the earliest English fiction about vampires which I very much enjoyed only 20 pages so there we go those are all the things that I have read this week I hope you've enjoyed this vlog it's been a little bit all over the place but it's been a really nice week overall it's been really nice to do, go out and do different things and actually have like a meal out and the boat ride at night like that all of those things have been absolutely lovely this week but yeah we are at the end so thank you so much if you've made it this far then let's put an envelope emoji because we did end with a bit of book mail and I'm gonna leave it there so I hope you have enjoyed, I hope you've all had a lovely week, and if you have enjoyed this video, please remember to give it that thumbs up, subscribe, and comment. Those three things really help this channel grow. My social media links, anyone I've mentioned, will all be linked below, and I will of course catch you in the very next video.